everybody, how goes it? My name is Aben Vincent. I'm a music therapist at the California Healthcare Facility in Stockton. That's a prison in Stockton, California. And um, yeah, I graduated from UOP in 08 and I've been working in forensics for whew, seven, eight years at this point. Maybe a little less. Anyways, um, yeah, so Hopefully through this presentation, you're gonna find out a little bit of insight into what it's like working with inmates, um, the challenges, the benefits, uh, what I get out of it. Um, and also I wanna show you about electronic music and beat machines. I find it to be just a really effective instrument uh, with this population specifically. Um, obviously it can be modified to probably, I don't know, sky's the limit. Um, but hopefully through, I want to show you an intervention, a songwriting intervention that I made that will hopefully kind of um, encompass both and um, I can kind of explain this whole presentation through that intervention. So a little blabbing uh, up front, um, I work at a mental health portion of my overall prison and it's called the Psychiatric Inpatient Program, PIP. We love acronyms in prison by the way. Um, so a lot of the diagnoses that come through are like adjustment disorder, bipolar disorder, depression, schizoaffective, schizophrenia, um, these type of things. Um, and, um, well, so the reason that people would come to my wing of the program in the very first place, the whole overarching goal is, uh, due to their symptoms, which I just mentioned, they are no longer able to function in prison. All right, whether the voices are just too intense and uh, they're just not safe to be in a cell with somebody else or what have you, they have delusions going on, um, or they're just so depressed that they attempt suicide or they, their coping skills really haven't developed uh, much more than just being able to cut themselves to, to kind of cope with the misery of prison. Um, and all this stuff is understandable. Um, prison is... is there are places for joy in prison, um, and you have to create those. But overall, prison is not a happy place. It's, it's not. It's, it's punishment. And, and so that is kind of the umbrella that you are, are working in. So that's something to be aware of. Um, that said, um, that's why our work is so necessary, and that's why you can be so effective uh, bringing music um, into these patients' life to help them develop the skills they need, you know. Um, I think music is, is inherently human, and so that is lacking in prison. Um, human contact, human experiences. Um, and so that's just my philosophy. That's why I find it effective, and really that, that's where um, the benefits come for me, right? That's why, that's my passion um, for being in prison and doing that. That's what I bring, um, and so that's important. I'm gonna stick to the outline here. Um, so our overarching goal is to get them so that they can function in prison. They come here for a short term, uh, a month to six, seven months. Um, they learn their skills, they get their medication on track, and then we shoot them back so they can serve the rest of their time. And often it's, it's a life sentence, um, which that will impact how you treat a patient. Um, sometimes it's short term, it's probably everything in between, but you're going to get a lot of lifers and, uh, that's heavy. Um, so as far as music therapy goals, we are part of a treatment team and uh, we have these overarching goals to stabilize and learn how to manage symptoms and whatnot. But I find the music therapy goals that I, I work on most where I'm personally and most effective would be, uh, like learning coping skills to manage symptoms, um, increasing insight into our symptoms, um, increasing social skills, uh, stress management techniques, uh, these sort of things. I, I find that I kind of really, I'm effective that, and that that's, that's kind of my lane that I stay in. Um, okay, if I forget anything, I'm just gonna go back, so forgive me if I'm a little all over the place. Um, uh, the characteristics of, of the inmate population, these are inmates. All right. They're here most of the time for, for violent crime. Um, some of it's pretty horrific, and, uh, and that's kind of challenging for uh, certain people to, to really get over in order to treat. So if that's something that you're not able to really work out, um, this is probably not a population for you. Just put that up front. Um, the way I get around that is um, 
nobody is born evil. Nobody is born with the intent to kill, rape, murder, sell drugs. Um, these got to be, um, well, generally, it takes a child that you have to beat that into. You have to neglect that into them. Um, you have to put them in an environment that's hostile, and they have to survive. And so, um, lots of times, it's, it's this environment and this upbringing that eventually puts them on this path that leads them to prison. So that's kind of my, my mindset. I see, I see inmates as people. I see them as inherently good um, that have made decisions that have been impacted by their life experiences. But, but my job is to be in that good realm, that human realm, to provide them with human experiences. Um, uh, so growth can occur. So, so mental health can happen. Um, that's my philosophy. Um, and it's important. I guess why I'm just blabbing on about that is because it's important to have that philosophy. If you don't have that, you will burn out. Man, I tell you what, burnout is real. Um, maybe I'll get back to that later. Um, so it's important to have uh, a reason. Find your passion to why you want to be in an prison environment. You have to find that. That that's gold right there. Remember that. All right, um, so the characteristics, right? So first of all, boundaries are a must. These are inmates and they are going to test you because uh, you are in their environment and it is a dog-eat-dog -dog kind of environment. So um, if you're firm with your boundaries, this is what I will do, this is what I won't do, this is what you can try but you will not get away with, um, that sets the tone for how they interact with you, what they try to get over on you and what they know not to. Um, so always boundaries up front, important. 90%, uh, so it's dangerous, right? These guys are, are they have the ability to inflict harm um, because that is, that is a prison population. But if you're authentic and you treat them with respect, that's 90% of your safety right there. But that, that's 90% of the job. In fact, um, it's hard to be therapeutic. It's hard for someone to learn from you if you're not providing those two things. Um, and I found that in my work, man, it goes, it goes so far. So, yeah, authenticity and respect is going to get you 90% of the way. Um, the other part of that, and it's probably more than 10%, really, is just safety. Being aware, um, being observant, not getting too comfortable. Um, Listening to your coworkers when they tell you, hey, I'm noticing that this inmate is, is feeling a little bit too familiar with you. Or, hey, I noticed that you were actually being a little too familiar with this inmate. Don't take offense to it. it it's, it's all a safety issue. Um, so anything that you that has told you about being over familiar um, or if you feel uncomfortable, um, listen to that learn from it, talk to your supervisors, figure it out. Um, yeah, I'm going to get all that out right up front. And I'm sorry if this is dragging on, but I think uh, just because it is such a severe place, this sort of stuff is, is important to kind of know going into it. So if you're still listening to this video and you're still interested, um, okay, let's, let's, let's get on with it. All right. So um, like I said, I find songwriting to be a really effective intervention. There is a lot of talented people in prison. Um, not everybody's an MC, but damn near 75% of them are. Uh, uh, people love music. People, uh, music is already a primary coping skill in prison prior to them coming to you because it's, like I said, it's an escape. They can put headphones on and they can um, just kind of tune out the prison environment. Um, they can relate to the songs they're hearing. Uh, inmates generally already use music as a coping skill. So as a music therapist, you're golden. Um, one thing that I have found through trial and error is that it's got to be a normal experience. Um, I have this sort of equipment because I can make hip-hop and R&B music with this. Um, certainly there, there are plenty of inmates that listen to rock and even someone who doesn't listen to rock can get down with rock. And you can, you can find different ways of using more traditional instruments. Um, and there's plenty of music therapists that do it perfect. Um, just for me, um, it's difficult. Um, I find that, that um, if I'm able to create the sounds and the textures um, that they are already familiar with, that they are already using for their coping skill, then uh, that's kind of my end. That's my, 
that's my um that's who I am as a music therapist. I provide a normalized experience and, and I already enjoy this stuff and, and that's kind of actually why I think I really like this population as well. We listen to the same music. Um, yeah, and so I enjoy doing this on my free time. I'm at home right now. Um, and uh, yeah, so songwriting using beat machines I find to be especially effective. Uh, so I tell you what, I'm just gonna kind of get into my songwriting intervention now and hopefully kind of describe how these machines work, the benefits of them, and um, give you an idea of maybe some of, um, well, I'm just gonna start blabbing. Let me get right into it. Hold on one second. All right, so in my songwriting group, I bring what's called a prompt. And usually just to kind of give you an idea of the setup, uh, I have like probably have five to eight people. That's kind of what how many people you can have in a group in my little wing of the hospital. Um, and I bring this prompt. And so these prompts are topics that we're going to write songs about. Um, and so at this point, not everybody's going to be a songwriter. And so I get around that by saying, uh, you know, you don't have to write lyrics in order to be uh, to have for this group to be effective for you. Um, you know, because everybody can write. Not everybody can write. Let me rephrase that. Um, everybody can express themselves in one way or another, all right? And um, not everybody feels comfortable, but it's kind of up to you as a facilitator to kind of make this a comfortable place. Um, so if you don't write lyrics, people can write poetry. A lot of people write poetry. Uh, people can write an essay. People can write letters to somebody else about this topic. Um, I even had a person who, who couldn't write very well, so he took a photocopy of like a page from a book and he... He darked out all the words that he didn't want to be seen, and then what was left over kind of created this this really cool poem that was that was spot on with the topic. Um, so you got to be creative uh, if someone's not able to write or whatnot. Um, but you, as a facilitator, are learning those tricks. All right, so I'm going to read this topic. This topic is on environment. All right, and so the first little part of this topic, this is a handout I give to them, kind of explains the whole what why it's important. So I'll read it. Our environments have a big impact on us. They shape our behavior, what we learn, who we interact with, and how we spend our time. We all come from different environments and have different experiences. In this group, you are currently in the same environment and have, may have uh, shared some of the same experiences. I like to start off with this topic, right? I mean, we can get deep with our songwriting topics, but this is, I think, one that everybody can have input on. No matter what your level of insight is, you can simply describe your the prison environment you know I had this for lunch <laughs> I uh, talk with this guy this makes me happy this doesn't all right so that's uh, kind of real basic black and white stuff um, but most of the time uh, they'll talk about their childhood growing up uh, a lot about gang experiences what they've learned um, you know if you give someone a microphone um, and you create a safe environment chances are they want to tell you about their life um, all right, so that's kind of the first part of this prompt, just telling us what it is. And so uh, then I have some questions, and I always say, like, you just answer these questions, um, that's good enough. Just write something, and that's just kind of like the boundary that I say. You guys have to write something. Give me some kind of product. Otherwise, they're sitting there, they're passing, um, and that's just that's me as a facilitator. That's how I roll. Uh, so you have to write something. So I provide these questions. Just answer these questions if, if you're stuck, all right? Uh, my hope is that you will take the answers and build a bigger body of work, um, but at the very least. So, what are some different environments you have been in? All right, they might answer the gang environment, uh, at home, the hood, prison, da da da. Uh, what was your role in those environments? You know, I was a son, a father, I was, yeah, a hustler, anything else. All right, um, who were the people in those environments? What kind of activities did you engage in and why? All right, um, that gets very interesting, right? And how has this environment shaped you? So that one takes more and more, that one takes more insight. Um, and eventually, you know, what we really want to do is, in fact, the whole name of this group, what is titled, is called Processing Emotions Through Songwriting. Um, I want to teach them how to use writing to just process what's going on in their mind, their emotions, their get some insight into their history and how it has affected where they are currently. Um, this is essentially I'm trying to increase insight by teaching them how to process through writing. 
Um, all right, man, and the final little blurb here is, these are questions to get you thinking about your environment. Please write a song, essay, poem, describing your current or past environments. Describe the people, activity, your actions, etc. Give the listener a picture of what your experience is and was like in this environment. All right, so at this point, um, I'll facilitate a discussion. I'll make sure everybody has some input. Everybody kind of has an idea about what they might write about. Um, yeah, and so got your ability to do a therapeutic uh, group discussion, uh, I find it, it's important for these kind of processing uh, type interventions. Um, yeah, so at this point, uh, we start doing music. I hand out paper, I give them pins. Um, and so uh, in different groups, I'll teach patients, inmates, you'll find that people err on one side or the other of what they call them, an inmate or a patient or an inmate patient. Um, I don't know. I come from the Department of State Office. I call them patients. Um, so yeah, sometimes I will teach them how to do it. Sometimes I'll just kind of make it myself. Uh, I really like everybody to be interactive. So uh, yeah, I'll kind of explain a little bit now about what I have here, all right? Uh, Beat machines and samplers and synthesizers, um, sequencers. Um, essentially what they all do is make cool sounds um, and they allow you to create a loop and they all sync together. Um, what is really cool is you can tweak the parameters to where it's kind of a no fail situation. It looks really intimidating. Um, but you can make it to where the timing is always on, right? You can do it to where no matter if you're pressing buttons, it's always going to play quarter notes. So if, if you want to kind of layer something and have it start really basic, you make a setting to where no matter if he has horrible rhythm, um, it is going to be spot on because we're only playing quarter notes. And I'll get into that. You can also set the scales. Um, it's like a, I don't know, like a minor blues thing. Um, and the key. All right. All right, so now we're in the same key, the same scale. I think that's pentatonic, but I made all these settings to where they'll work together so they can play anything and it's essentially gonna work. Um, and the other thing is there's uh, step sequencers. And so I'll show you a little bit about all this. Now, um, would I use all this in my group? Possibly. Some of these machines are really great for therapy. Some are not. Um, my therapy machines are at work. So this is kind of my home stuff. Um, you pretty much, you want to make it to where um, it's a no fail situation. So when you can make these settings to put kind of a boundary of where they have to stay in when they play, um, that's what I find is the best. Too many buttons and knobs and crazy stuff to where they can like really just screw it up. Uh, if they're fiddling, um, that's not really a good instrument. Um, so anyways, I probably, I w if you're looking for an instrument, uh, this is called the Korg Electribe. Um, I will start with this one. You can get them used for about 150 and I'll show you a little bit more about what that does. Um, but they get more expensive and more technical and I find the more technical they get, um, the less usable they are. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to use these instruments and how I use them. So first what you want to know is that they're all connected by a clock. And so that allows them to all be in time with each other. And that, that's through what's called MIDI. Not super important. And you don't need to do more instruments. You can just use one and then you don't need to worry about it. Um, but that is cool because then you can kind of hand out instruments um, to different people and get the whole group involved. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, kind of how I run through teaching uh, how to make a beat in my songwriting group using instruments. So this is called uh, a drum machine. All right, it's made by a Kai. Really expensive and a not very good music therapy instrument, but I have one that's cheaper and kind of dumbed down that is, that is great, and I use that. And it's called an MPC. This is something else. Uh, I don't recommend this one. Uh, but it's really cool for DJ gigs. All right, so um, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get a template. Um, I'm gonna put in trap music, all right? Bye bye. And so what it's going to do is it's just going to give us a uh, a little loop showing us the different sounds that are available. 
Um, and so I let, you know, the group kind of agree or the person uh, agree uh, on what they want. So um, that's a pretty cool process in itself. And there's hundreds, so you kind of got to be limiting. But anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Again, these are loops made by amazing producers. But it's giving you kind of an idea of the sounds. So what you do is you're going to load that instrument and then, uh, oops, come down here. And so what it does is it takes all those different sounds in there and it puts it in this little grid right here. All right. And so it's kind of cool because these all kind of work together. Um, so yeah, there's a key to that. You find that key and then you kind of make the adjustments and if you know your instrument, it's quick, it's easy. Um, and take it from there. So I tell you what, I already got a kit picked out because I've set all this other stuff to go with it. So let me erase this right quick. Um, and how do I do that? I'm still learning this in one, by the way. Boop. Okay. So uh, here we have this. already an awesome R&B-ish kind of sound. Here's my drums. Um, yeah, so um, everything works from a metronome and you set that and so that's kind of maybe a, a challenging thing to explain to, to somebody who's never made a beat before um, and doesn't really know about music. Most of your guys won't be musicians. Uh, so it sounds like this. All right, this thing sets us to, uh, to do like a four bar loop. Um, yeah, so I say, let's start off with a snare. A lot of times I'll be like, you know, do you have a beat that you like to pound out on uh, your cell door or something? Everybody's got like a, everybody, everybody, you ask one of those. Um, so I'll start with that, you know? Uh, you got that? And they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, and their neighbor will be like, oh God, yes he does. Uh, so uh, they'll do that and then I'll say, okay, let's start there. Let's use that beat or some variation of it, right? Um, you kind of want to start with what they know. Uh, yeah, so after kind of getting that established, uh, we'll say, let's start with the snare, all right? So, uh, like I was saying before, not everybody has great rhythm. In fact, most of the time they, well, no, not everybody can play to a metronome. Let's say that. This is challenging, right? So what I've done is I've set this quantization, which is a time correct feature, uh, to quarter notes. So if I were to, it's going to correct that and make it cool no matter what. It takes a little bit of prompting, um, but let's see if we can kind of record a loop, all right? Uh, let's see here. This should be working if I hear it. All right. Phone messed up. Forgive me. Um, two, three, four. All right. Let me get back on track. Here we go. So, uh, we're going to record the snare drum. Uh, all right. So, wait for the bar to go over. And. And I can be a little bit off. What you're going to hear, hopefully, is that everything has been corrected. Which is really nice, right? You do not have to be a spot on musician. You don't need, it does the work for you. Um, all right, so we got our snare, all right? And that was all quantized, corrected to, to quarter notes. Um, and now I'm going to do a kick drum but I'm going to, I'm going to change it to, uh, to eighth notes, to quantize. So let's see here, time correct, press the eighth notes, do it. And so now, uh, wait for the bar to come around, two, three, and. Bow, 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 bow. 
bam, bam. Boom, 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 boom. Ba, bam, bam, bam. Ba, bam. Ba, bam. Boom, boom. All right. Cool. All right. Pretty simple. Boom. Battery's dying. Let's do this quick. All right. It's pretty simple. So now I'm going to lay down the, um, the cool guitar part. And I'm not sure if the volume is the same. So let's not worry about it. Here we go. I'm doing quarter notes. I could make that adjustment. But I'm not going to. Because I got okay timing. Cool, right? All right, cool. So we got that. And you can see we're already vibing. We got a good thing going. So at this point, the group's kind of like getting into it, right? It's just, um, they haven't heard good music that they've made. They haven't been in a studio situation probably ever, or certainly not since they've been locked up. Um, they haven't had access to this kind of equipment, maybe ever, but certainly not since they've been locked up. I like to bring big speakers so it's loud. They haven't heard music coming out of a 12-inch speaker since, you know, their Honda Civic or Cadillac. Um, so yeah, you have buy-in at this point, right? You have inspiration happening. Um, you have excitement in the air. Uh, that's why I love this job. Um, all right, so take off the metronome. We don't need it anymore. All right, I'm gonna show you about step sequencing now. All right, this thing's going. Uh, we find a sound. I got percussion set to this. That little sound right there, and I don't know if you can see it. All right, yeah, there's this little light moving over these buttons, all right? And this button is one bar. So what you do is you, you put in the sound. And what we're hearing right now is kind of like eighth notes, right? There's a 16 little button grid, and I am doing eighth notes. But, uh, not knowing music, you can just put a bunch of them in. You can't go wrong. You're just pretty much plugging in and taking out. And you're getting different kind of rhythms from it, right? So you don't need the music, you don't even need the look. And it's awesome. All right, so I, I have my hand this machine to somebody. And, and all right, the phone turned off. I don't know where we're at. Post editing, which I didn't want to do, but here we go. All right, so I'm going to do a bass line now. Again, uh, everything's pentatonic scale. I got a, a low sound, a sub bass, um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to program it. Um, whether inmates, it depends on their musicality, but uh, I'll, I'll get more into that. All right, here we go. Uh, machine that just, um, I have a sound, a sound picked, and I have it in some kind of, sounds kind of like a bluesy thing, uh, uh, in the same key and everything, so you can hand this to a patient and just kind of let them jam. You don't need to know what you're doing, you can just be just a grid. You don't need to be musical. It's all work. I'm not that cool. I just kind of... I don't know. You don't really need to know anything. You just need to kind of have a little bit of rhythm uh, to plug it in right. So, let's see here. I'm, I'm going to practice some restraint. Uh, when I record this, but you can set this to do a four bar pattern and then I'll record it. So you just hit record.
it's cool that, you know, I'm doing it, but um, you can get to your group uh, to a place or if you can just kind of prompt them on the spot to where they're actually creating this. Again, what, I'm doing quarter notes that have been quantized. All the timing is just the computer's doing it. Uh, the scales, the key, the computer's doing all that. All I'm kind of doing is providing a little bit of rhythm and um, and that's about it. So if you can kind of present this in such a way that, that they're doing it themselves, they don't need a lot of skill, it's so empowering. And uh, you have buy-in there. All right, so um, everything can be kind of uh, muted and whatnot, which is cool, right, for performance. It's volume, right, so now we're back to this. You got this. I want to show you a cool feature on, on this Electrive here. So we're going to get a different sound. You can have many different sounds playing at once on this. This has what's called a chaos pad. Again, right, we're set to a scale. We don't need to mess with the amp. All you gotta do is have a finger, and you press it. So dope. I love handing this instrument to people that are like, dude, I can't do that, I don't know what I'm using. You got a finger, and you can do shapes in here. And they just start rocking out, man. And then lots of times I'll get in there and start tweaking with this stuff. But really, I mean, you're twisting it up. So like I said, if you can get everybody on the instrument just kind of vibing, you have a group that is so incredibly therapeutic simply because it is providing like music in a very interactive, um, focused, and relaxing state that is so opposite of prison. Um, it's so therapeutic, right? Uh, mind you, while all this is going on, we got other people that are doing their, their writing in the background. Let me make sure I don't run out of time here. All right, so people are doing their writing, they're rehearsing. Uh, you kind of have everything coming together. Uh, you got your guy rocking out over here. <laughs> um, yeah, you got. And so this this machine this is just me showing off at this point, but uh, it's got other cool features. Like I said. What makes a good instrument is when you don't need to be a musician to play, right? You can't hand an inmate a guitar or a piano and just be like, jam out, go. Uh, but with these kind of instruments, it's possible. They're made for people who aren't musicians. Uh, but you can do cool breakdowns. So I say, dude, when I tell you, you put your finger on there. And then, uh, well, just watch. All right, so you're doing this. All right, you say, keep your finger there because we're gonna do a breakdown. So dope. All right, so this is just pretty much like a little repeater and you can get more drastic with it. All right, so they just need to know how their finger and put it down at the right spot. You can do cool stuff like You take it off at the right time, or even the wrong time, whatever. But it's tactile, right? That that that's kind of the draw of it. All right. So, anyways, um, so we have a beat at this point, right? And and there's a vibe, there's an energy in the group that is that's awesome. It's 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 electric. It's it's. It's contagious, all right? So, um, and you got people rocking out, they're muting this, they're turning this up. They might be coming back to this and doing right, they're switching it up. This does weird stuff to where you can, whatever. 
These machines all do more than what I'm showing you, and if you want to really get into that and show your patients how to do that, um, it's rewarding, right? Um, so I'm just gonna kind of turn it down this point. So we gotta be, we gotta be. I think what you'll find a lot is that this is, can also be like a skill development group, because a lot of our guys that are getting out, um, they like music. They want to they pursue music music uh, like professionally when they get out. And their brothers are already signed. They've got a cousin. Um, it's just something they're interested in. And I, I wholly promote that. Whether it's um, a possibility that they're going to make a billion dollars like Drake, I don't know. Some, sure. Yeah, some do have that level of skill. But if anything, it's something other than doing dope or selling drugs, or doing all the other activities, right? It's, it's skill development, it's, it's, it's recreational at that point, right? And it's therapeutic. It's something that they can do to process, to, it's a creative outlet for when they get out and need that. Man, we all need that. In fact, if you're gonna be working in prison, you're gonna need that too. Um, yeah, so, in this intervention, um, we have this beat, and then I turn it down, and I say, all right, everybody, it's time to recite. Who wants to go first? And I make sure that everybody knows that if someone's gonna recite, and I want to create a safe place where everybody feels empowered to recite to the music or what have you, um, that we all clap. That's important, right? It creates a safe environment to where people that typically wouldn't speak out uh, feel validated and, and your group dynamic comes tight um, where therapy can actually happen. Um, yeah, so we'll go, we'll kick a beat. Uh, generally, you know, I'm just kind of controlling stuff at this point, but we're all listening, vibing, and clapping at the end. Um, yeah, and so uh, if you have the type of group where you can process afterwards, what did you learn uh, about this? What did you learn about your peers? Did anybody have same, similar experiences? Does anybody have different? Does anybody have any um, insights for other people? It depends on how you want to kind of facilitate that group discussion, and that's completely up to you. I mean, that, that's what you learn as a facilitator. Um, but yeah, I think in a nutshell, uh, that's kind of everything I wanted to show you um, about one of the interventions that I use in prison and how I kind of interact and relate to inmates, how I engage them in a, a therapeutic intervention that uh, hopefully they can learn something with and take it back. Um, this is how I'm able to work in prison. This is my passion. I'm effective with it. Um, I get a response and I can give at the same time. It's very reciprocal. Um, so this is how I'm able to stay. And so I do want to like mention, you know, a little bit about burnout because if you work in prison long enough, you are going to get burned out. Period. I mean, that might be any therapeutic job. I really don't know. Um, but if you don't have something that you enjoy, a reason to come to work and say, I had a good time today, I'm speaking for myself, um, you will burn out and it will be so difficult to keep coming back. But you will, because it pays a lot of money. You're gonna get paid more in prison than you're gonna be able to get paid any other place. Granted, you could do uh, private practice and make more money, but whew, that kind of stress is, is something like, I, I couldn't do that, at least not full time. Um, but as far as like a nine to fiver, Prison is gonna be the most money that I've found, all right? And I'm, I'm speaking out the wazoo here. But um, I think most people find that prison it pays the most. Um, and so a lot of people get stuck in this trap to where they hate their job, right? Because it's a stressful place. Um, but they keep coming back because they got a pension, because they got paid. They got baby mamas and they gotta, they gotta make that money. Um, so, do yourself a favor and find a way to make your job work for you. And for me, it's this. For you, it's whatever. And maybe it is this. Um, it's up to you. Uh, but you gotta make, make the prison environment something that you kinda have some control over and that you enjoy. Um, I think that's kinda some parting words of wisdom because that's gonna make or break you whether you're retiring at 55 with your full pension, which is dope. Um, or you burn out and get walked off the job for something stupid. Um, yeah. So we do not do observations at, at my facility, but there's other facilities in California that does. Uh, Napa State Hospital is where I used to work, and if you're interested in doing a tour, I would contact Napa State Hospital. 
Uh, Camille Gentry is like the head of the RT department over there. Um, yeah, we do that. Um, we're always hiring because we're always short. Mm, yeah, I'm making a, about a hundred thousand a year, which um, and I'm still paying off school loans, so that's important to know. You know, nothing to gawk at. But I will say that working in this environment's come with its cost. My personal life, that's the reality of it. You know, um, I have been. I've been kind of assaulted. I, I, I've actually found myself in the middle of fights more often than not trying to stop them. Uh, so I've, I've seen my fair share of being physical with inmates. I've certainly had to restrain them. My particular facility has gotten a lot safer. Um, but at a place like Napa State Hospital, people get hurt all the time. Um, that is a reality. That is a reality. Um, I get to work four tens, which means I, I go to work from Monday through Thursday for 10 hour days, and that's 7.30 to 5.30 without a lunch, which I kind of take, don't tell nobody. Um, but I get Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off, which is nice. I get a three day weekend every week. That's awesome, in my opinion. Uh, overtime, which is time and a half, is uh, generally always available. So if I need to make a quick couple thousand, uh, in my page period, uh, I can do that, which is dope. Um, and a real plus, don't get used to doing that because it doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's going to dry out and if your paycheck's already up here, uh, or if your, your spending's up here, I'm also a dad, as you can obviously tell. I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, but I hope I answer any questions. I tell you what, uh, I'm sure they'll have my email address. Uh, somewhere listed next to this video. Anybody who's interested in working with this population, finding out about this, um, just wants to know about music therapy and what that's like, um, you know, uh, in the Sacramento or Stockton area, I know a little bit about that. Um, you know, I, I, I'm very accessible. Hit me up. I would love to give you any time I have uh, because uh, this profession that we're in is awesome. It's, it's amazing, and, and God bless you for doing it. So, um, yeah, hopefully this answered any questions or maybe pointed you in a direction or away from a direction. Uh, I'm blabbering now, so I'm just going to call it at that. Thank you very much for watching the whole video. You're awesome.